Hi, this is Megan Bertrand. Today I am going to give a brief introduction about the series and shunt compensation techniques in power system network. The compensation techniques are used to support the system to supply an excellent power by improving stability, controllability and reliability. These are all the topics that we are going to cover in this lecture. System. Frequently we are calling compensation techniques as control techniques. What is the need of control techniques in power system? To explain this, we are going to an old Tamil literature circular. It says, Kaka Purulada Adakatai Akam Adaninum Ildai Uyirke. That means, one should have control on himself to secure his life. None other than other to have for his living soul. To get a secure power, the system should have a good stability control. But due to sudden disturbance, sometimes the system may not be capable to protect itself. How a man needs some good friends to recover from his own problem, here power system also needs a suitable compensator to protect. What are all the problems facing in system? First point, maintaining the voltage profile at each side is a difficult task for varying reactive power demand. Second, some transmission lines are operated well below their limit, hence therefore lines get overloaded. This improper distribution of power makes transmission system very congested. Third point, with ever increasing demand of electric power, present installed capacity are not sufficient. Also, existing transmission networks are having less transmission capacity which is not possible to transfer bulk future power. Therefore, expansion on generation and transmission networks is needed. Constructing new transmission lines are not economic and not possible to complete within the time period. Hence, to improve the transmission line capacity, to regulate the conjunction in the transmission line and to regulate the system voltage profile, an advanced compensator or needed. Compensators are used to regulate the real and reactive power flow in the system. Consider a two area system with sending voltage and receiving voltage as Vs and Vr, phase angle as del S and del R. With this two area system, we can frame the real and reactive power flow equations as given here like this. The real power flow can be controlled by three parameters, voltage magnitude, phase angle and transmission line reactance. But the voltage magnitude and phase angle are, have, are having some limits and we can't control at that much extent. So only parameter we are having to control the real power flow is the transmission line reactance. If we increase the transmission line reactance, the power flow will be reduced in the transmission network. If we reduce the transmission line reactance, power flow in the transmission line can be increased. The next, coming to reactive power, it depends upon the voltage difference between the sending end voltage and receiving end voltage. If sending end voltage is greater than receiving end voltage, then the circuit is Transmission line is behaves as a inductive in nature and we have to inject in huge reactive power into the system. If sending in voltage is lesser than the receiving in voltage, then the transmission line reactance is in capacity in nature, then we have to observe the reactive power from the system in order to maintain the voltage profile. Compensation technique. The purpose of transmission network is to transfer the power from generating station to the consumer. In order to improve the real and reactive power flow in the transmission network, we are having three quantities as we seen in the last slide, line reactance, voltage magnitude and phase cycle. In earlier days, we had a two form of 
compensators, fixed shunt capacitors and series capacitors. They are mechanically operated the capacitors and uh, in order that we got the compensation. But nowadays, after the advent of power electronic devices, 1970 onwards, we are having the new technology of compensation stack devices, flexible AC transmission system devices. These are nothing but a combination of power electronic devices along with capacitors and inductors. So, the main form of compensation are in two forms. One is shunt and series. And the third one is the combination of both series and shunt forms. So, just we will just see how the compensation acts if we include in the system either in series or shunt, or it may be in combination. If you are connecting the compensator in series with the transmission line, then the compensator needs the voltage into the system, thereby it controls the line current of the system. Next, by connecting the shunt compensator into the system, this will inject the current into the system, thereby it controls the voltage at the connected point. Both the combination series as well as shunt that will control both real power as well as reactive power in the system. We will analyze the shunt and series compensator and analyze the performance of both compensators. So the figure here shown a trans transmission network of having without compensation with shunt compensation. The diagram, first diagram, it shows a simple two area system and their vector diagram. The next second diagram it shows a shunt compensator which injects a reactive current at the center of the transmission line. So this type of compensation we can say midpoint compensation. While we are injecting the reactive current into the system this will improve the system voltage at the connected point. So as you see in this vector diagram, by injecting the reactive current into the system, thereby we are increasing the voltage at the connected point. That means midpoint voltage here it is increased. The last diagram it shows the shunt compensator absorbs the current from the system. So while we are observing the reactive current from the system that the system voltage at the connected point is reduced. So that it is clearly seen from the vector diagram. So now we will analyze the power angle curves. While we are installing a shunt compensator in the transmission system, the power flow, real power flow equation becomes 2 Vr Vm divided by transmission line reaction in the sine del by 2. So here the figure shows the power angle diagram for without compensator as well as with shunt compensator. The blue color line shows the power angle curve for without compensator and the green color curve shows with shunt compensator. Let's take an angle of 40 degree. Mostly, most of the power system are operate in 40 degree angle because of the stability reason. At exactly 40 degree, without any compensator, the transmission line it allows the power of 0.65 per unit. For the same case, if we go for midpoint compensation, then at exactly 80 degree, that means 80 by 2, 40 degree again that will come. So at that time, exactly we are getting, we are achieving around 1.3 per unit of power flow. Next, we will discuss about the reactive power curve. So here the equation is become like this, and the reactive power versus phase angle curves are drawn here. The blue color line, it shows the without compensation and the green color line it shows with shunt compensation line. At the same phase angle 40 degree 
here we are having we are getting 0.24 per unit of reactive power but at phase angle 80 degree we are achieving around 0.48 per unit let's come to the topic of series compensator series compensator we have to connect in series with the transmission network as like this why we are connecting the series compensator in series with the transmission line we can be able to inject the voltage input into the system we can control the current flow in the system that means we are controlling the real power flow in the system so as see here the vector diagram clearly represents for both inductive compensation as well as capacitive compensation so now we will go for the real power angle curve analysis so after implementing the series compensation the power flow equation becomes like this here the denominator is above transmission line reactance minus series compensation that means series reactance value the diagram here it shows it compares all the three form that is without compensation with series compensation and with shunt compensation blue color line shows without compensation and red color line shows shunt compensation color shows with series compensation without any compensation in the transmission network we can be able to achieve only 0.65 per unit that already we have seen and also by implementing a shunt compensator at the midpoint in the transmission system we can be able to achieve only 1.3 per unit but for the same phase angle degree at 40 degree by implementing the series compensation we can be able to achieve 1.6 five per unit value reactive power curve again by implementing the series compensation the equation becomes like this by using this we can plot the reactive power versus phase angle the curve here it shows compare all the three form of uh, or diagram the blue color it represents without any compensation again the green color it represents with shunt compensation and the red color it shows with series compensation again for the same 40 degree of phase angle as like as already we have discussed for the reactive power without any compensation we are having 0.24 per unit and with shunt compensation it is 0.48 per unit but by implementing series compensation in the same network we can be able to achieve only 0.3 per unit only that is which was uh, lesser than the shunt compensation value from this two compensation method we can conclude which one is which compensation is for what purpose we can use and uh, respectively we can go for some application if suppose as well here series compensation that controls the real power at the at good manner in terms of shunt compensation that controls the reactive power comparing with the series compensation conclusion on comparing both series and shunt compensation both are having capable to control real power as well as reactive power but as in performance wise we can say series compensation is for real power control and shunt compensation is good for reactive power control that we have analyzed through the power flow power angle curve analysis thank you very much